Lala alienation of genders, several plot lines revolve around males treating girls as objects of sexual gratification. Then there are class animosities aroused through the image of the BMW owning New Russian. And finally, the serial explores both interracial tension and the relationship between popular racism and official patriotism. Schwala then sets out to overcome a uh, litany of othernesses. And it's its long serial trajectory enables it to enact metatextually what it narrates textually. Just as the conflicts are softened and ameliorated, so the initial impression of alienation seeds place to a mutual empathy more likely to resonate with older viewers. So, you know, the response to those older viewers who were totally shocked and wanted to wash their hands after watching episodes one, two, and three was just carry on, stay with it. And by the end, you'll find it a lot more reassuring than, uh, than it may have seemed at first. The trouble is, many of them were, were not willing to make that uh, uh, sacrifice, travel that journey. Ironically, Shkola concludes by re-establishing the Soviet cult of the child, which it had seemingly set out to dismantle, but has now purged a sentimental falsehood. In the first Channel 1 discussion of the program, Yelena Drapeko, de Deputy President of Russia's State Culture Department, observed, quote, myths about school exist in our country. There are all these old films about school. In fact, again, that was something we were talking about. There are our memories of Soviet schools, films of our childhood years, our childhood teachers, and we're all saturated, prakitani, with these myths. And now, they've taken these myths and overturn them, a prakinoya. I remember talking to a, a, um, a, a sort of middle-aged Russian woman about the serial, and, and she said, I was so upset by it. My treasured memory of school children is the little girls with their you know, bantiki and their nice brown dresses and the white pinafores, and this has completely destroyed that, um, that nostalgic memory. And I think that was, a common, uh, that was a common reaction among many older Russians. Likewise, the juxtaposition of the scenes of reconciliation and the physics teacher's debauched mockery of teacher-pupil friendship encapsulates the central question that Schola evoked. Does it boldly challenge official optimism, or does it revitalize state-endorsed tolerance? And the answer hangs on the success with which four conflicting discourses are integrated. Number one, that of a pseudo-liberal critique of official patriotism. Number two, that of the deviant subcultures, like that of the emos, that Kremlin symbolism simply is blind to. Number three, that of a generalized rhetoric of cohesion. And number four, that of official patriotism itself. And the school, of course, is the ideal site on which to explore this encounter. The lessons portrayed most frequently are literature, history, and geography. And those are all deeply informed by the patriotic agenda. And they're delivered against the background of students surreptitiously exchanging insults, mocking teachers, etc. The struggle to overcome adolescent recalcitrance becomes the central figure, because these, of course, are the very challenges that the state must meet to ensure intra-societal cohesion. So the school functions simultaneously as the displaced peripheral effect of the state's confrontation with otherness, and as that confrontation central model. <coughs> the reconciliation that such an integration would herald amounts to the achievement of a Gramscian hegemony in which counter discourses are not only assimilated into the dominant discourse, <coughs> but they actually reinforce or consolidate its dominance by actively performing the transcendence of opposition. So the point is you don't just incorporate, you actually performatively <coughs> overcome uh, and thereby reinforce power by what David Morley terms, quote, hegemony as dialectic process connecting and articulating the margins to the center, close quote. The Muslim boy, Timur, <coughs> provides an indication of the national theme's location <coughs> at the century periphery threshold. Until the final third of the serial, he suffers the very same ostracism <coughs> endured by Anya, the heroine, whose narrative line dominates the serial. The two fates unfold in parallel. Timur progresses from loneliness and to being the victim of, of, of racism to touching romance with a girl of classic Slavic demeanor, Sonia. 
whilst Anya's journey ends, as we know, in alienation and death. The intersection of racial exclusion, a peripheral theme, and teenage angst born of social exclusion, the main subplot, ensures the penetration of centre by periphery. The modelling function is evident in the school's approach to inter-ethnic tension, combining discipline with the proselytising of national pride. During history lessons, Vadim the skinhead is castigated for muttering objections <coughs> to uh, the critical account of uh, Nazis. So, you know, the teacher is giving the official account of the uh, victory against Nazism and he's uh, muttering his objections and his support of uh, Nazi propaganda. By contrast, geography lessons include suggestions that Moscow is overrun with migrants, echoing the bending of official nation building to extremist ends. And I think it's high time for a clip, isn't it? <coughs> uh, if I can. What I'll do is, uh, this is this is how each episode opens. So this. Omniscient sort of uh, security cameras, and I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll wind it on to the. I won't, I won't translate this bit. You hear what he tells you, you know, Russian will hear what he's just a teacher saying, you know, go past the uh, metro station in, in uh, Moscow, and I've got a feeling I'm in Tajikistan. <coughs> <laughs> so he's going further and saying our laws on immigration are actually very, very soft. This is your geography teacher telling you this. And, and moreover, he's telling it to a, a young boy from Dagestan. Не только не наказывает, его просто отправляют обратно домой за счет государства. А через несколько месяцев он опять тут. Вот и все. So, not only do we punish them, punish them, we send them home and we pay for them to go home, and then a few months later they're back again. Можно я просто? А как нам наказывать? Назвать камеры? Расстрелом. So, this is the naughtiest boy in class. Uh, and he's uh, he's challenging the teacher, saying, "Well, how do we punish them? Do we shoot them?" Or gas chamber. Or gas chamber. Yes, yeah, that's right. So I mean, that's a pretty sort of uh, pretty uh, insolent comeback, isn't it? <coughs>